Hey, what up y'all? Mr. Cruz here, your friendly neighborhood producer back with another video. And in today's video, I'm going to uncover some things about myself. Let go. So for today's video, what I wanted to do is I wanted to give you guys a behind the scenes look at what I throw on my master channel. So a lot of times when it comes to like, you know, just mixing and mastering your stuff, um, knowing that I make beats and when I upload beats to my store, the mix has to be right. They have to be the right level. They have to sound good. They have to be nice and loud. So I wanted to show you guys what I do with my master channel to help me get those results. So as you can see, one of the main things that I do when it comes to like mixing and arranging is that I bust my tracks. If you don't know what busting your tracks is, and if you're not doing it, you definitely should be doing it right here where my yellow is all of these instruments are drums and all of them are being routed out to my drums bus uh, and then everything in blue is all of my instruments and they're all being routed out to my instrument bus I guess except for this one yo what the easy there we go um, all of these are being routed out to my instrument bus so my drum bus and my instrument bus are both being routed out to my sub mix and then my sub mix is going over to my master channel so to quote Spike Lee get on the bus man there are probably so many of you who like weren't alive when that movie came out and like you don't get the reference. Now, the reason why you would want to bust your instruments together because it helps with your processing, it helps with your workflow, it doesn't put as much strain on your computer. If I'm going to throw a, a low cut filter on a whole bunch of my instruments, I may as well do all of them at one time. So it helps to just have my instrument channel with a low cut filter instead of throwing a low cut filter on each individual instrument channel. Same thing with drums. Usually with my drums, I like to use a uh, parallel compression in order to like really get it to punch and really get it to kick. So having that and doing that to all of my drums at one time, it's better and it's more efficient as opposed to trying to do that in each individual, you know, mixer channel. Like, what are you doing? Wasting your time. That's dumb. I don't have the time to waste all that time doing that stuff. My Netflix queue is not going to watch itself. All right, so then here, the big secret, the big reveal, what do I put on my master channel? And two things. And two things that I really don't even use. So I have uh, my fruity DB meter and then I have the Ulean loudness meter. The reason I have these two is because I like to have my DB meter open so that way when I'm mixing and I'm gain staging everything, I wanna make sure that I'm not, I try my best to not go over negative six DB because I wanna give myself enough headroom before I start throwing a limiter and stuff like that on so that I'm not clipping and I'm not getting any kind of distortion. Not that clipping is bad, but this is just the way that I like to do it. And then I also had the Ulean loudness meter too. So this also helps me if let's say I'm making a beat and I really like this beat and I want to throw this beat on like an instrumental tape or a beat tape, then I use the Ulean loudness meter so that I can make sure that I'm hitting the targets that I need to hit when it comes to uploading to like Spotify or YouTube or Apple Music. It has tons of different presets so that you can can kind of make sure that you're hitting um, those target DBs or those target luffs. So lately I haven't been using this a whole lot, but when I first got it, it was extremely helpful. Um, now I just tend to use other things. Speaking of other things, you might sit there and think like, well, Cruz, yo, that's not that impressive that you only have two meters on your master channel. I know, I get it. I like to troll people. On my sub mix is really what you wanted to see. So this is what you paid front row tickets for. This is all the stuff that I use in order to get my mix to really be glued together uh, and also to get my loudness to make sure that I'm hitting those DBs and those luffs. First thing that I start out with is Fruity Balance and I use this because again, like I said, I try to hit negative six DB. So if I go a little bit over or a little bit under, I'll use balance in order to make sure that I'm hitting negative six DB before I throw a limiter on. Next thing is I have the parametric EQ2. So this I just use just for, you know, maybe I might boost the highs a little bit in order to get it to really stand out or if I wanna boost the lows a little bit more. So these are very secretive, very discreet, very hidden moves that I'm making here. The opposite of Jada Pinkett Smith's um, love life. We ride together. We, we die, die together. together. Bad, Bad marriage for, for life. life. <laughs> Next thing I have is EQ Citral 295. So this is from Archuria. The reason I like using this EQ after using the parametric one is because this one has mid-side processing and mid-side processing allows me to expand, right? To kind of um, add a little bit more imaging to the high end and to monify 
the low end a little bit more to get that low end, that kick, that 808, that snare, that clap to hit right through the center of my mix and have all my instruments or all the high end um, kind of spread out more, just like John Mayer's gene pool. Next, I have Neutron Elements 3. What I use this for is just for compression, and this is just light compression. I literally go in here and I add the uh, gentle compression preset. And from here, I'll just kind of adjust the threshold to what I want. And I like this over using the stock uh, compressors that come in FL, even though those compressors are really great, but what they lack is they lack a meter because I really only want to touch like one to two, maybe three dB of gain reduction whenever I'm using a compressor um, prior to adding like my limiter or my maximizer. So the reason why I use this is because it gives me a meter so that I can be able to see. Now you're not always gonna be able to hear those differences and I get that like you wanna mix with your ears and all that stuff. Stop telling me what I already know. I know what I'm doing. But that little bit of gentle compression is really what's gonna let me pull a Gloria Stefan later on in my mastering phase. Get loud. Come on, yo, don't be so in culture. You don't know who Gloria Stefan is. Next, I have my Fruity Soft Clipper. Now this is really just like a precautionary thing. I don't use this all the time, but if my mix, if I notice that my mix is way too low, then I'll definitely throw the Soft Clipper on. I have it on there, but I don't always turn it on, but that's essentially what that's there for. And lastly, I have Ozone Elements 9. So Ozone Elements 9, all right, I'm not gonna lie. All right, I'm gonna be real with you. All right, I'm gonna give you the gems. I once mastered somebody's album for like half a band. And all I did was throw it on Ozone Elements 9, hit Master Assistant and let it do its thing. And then bam, like it just, it works. It does what it needs to do. Now I'll do a little bit of touch up whenever it comes to like my limiting and making sure that I'm hitting my negative 14 luffs. But overall, I really have to do very little when it comes to using this. And this is what I make sure that I use to make sure that my beat is like up there in volume. Of course, I use a reference track and all that stuff. And like I said, if it's not, then I'll use the Fruity Soft Clipper. But even when I export like my stems and whatnot, I make sure to bypass my Soft Clipper because when people get the stems, I don't want them to have a stem that doesn't have headroom for them to mix on their own. So there you go, a look at my master channel. Because I have this already set up in my template, it helps me to work a lot quicker. And as I kind of go on and as I learn new tricks and new tactics, new strategies, I'll sometimes change. I might get a new EQ plugin that has mid-side processing and I might swap out my EQ Citral 295. I might take out the Neutron 3 Elements compressor and I might use like H comp from Waves. I'm swapping and changing stuff like all the time. But overall, this is the signal chain that has worked well for me so far. Well, there you guys go. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. If you feel like you've learned something in this video, make sure you hit that like button for me. Also, I recently did a tutorial on this EQ Citral 295. So if you're interested in checking that video out, click right here. Other than that, it's your boy, Mr. Cruz, out.